Hello, everybody. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Can I get a uh, yes? Thumbs up. Awesome. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for hanging out uh, with us today. Uh, and as always, thank you backstage for everything you guys are doing. Uh, everything you guys are doing during this time to give hope uh, back to actors and for creating the series and for inviting me to speak with you guys every week. So hopefully you guys can, uh, great, good. You can hear me, see me okay. Good to see you guys again. Thank you so much for supporting the videos, for coming to uh, watch, uh, attend a free audit in one of our Zoom classes. And I'm just happy to be uh, here with you guys showing you today how to guarantee a win every time you get a note. So welcome aboard. Some of you guys know I've been collaborating with Backstage for many years and all of my articles are archived and available to read on Backstage. So thank you Backstage again. And for those of you that don't know, my name is Joseph Perlman. And at my studio, Perlman Acting Academy, we help actors launch their careers faster and reach Oscar potential on set. We have online Zoom classes from Hollywood to anywhere in the world for beginners to celebrity level actors. And at my studio, we believe that you guys, actors can launch their careers faster and with less effort when you're lit up with fun. And we invite you to come watch the breakthroughs live from anywhere in the world. You're all invited uh, after this to go to my website, www.josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N. And you're invited to attend a free audit in one of the Zoom classes, including the master class. A small group of our celebrity and series lead level actors getting a workout every week on currently casting major film and TV auditions. You guys are welcome and you can sign up for a free audit. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Joseph Perlman. And what we're doing is helping these actors every week to make the fun and brave choices to stand out and guarantee a win uh, in an audition, virtual, video, live. So here we go. Getting a note, getting a note. Let's talk about this. How many of you guys have, have gotten notes, whether it's auditions or on set? Um, it, it, I'm so happy because some of you guys that are joining us today, I've been working with for years. So thank you guys again for, for coming. You guys, getting notes is, getting notes, it's an awesome thing in any context to get a note, okay? It means your coach, a director, a casting director is paying close attention to your work and wants to refocus it in some manner. Like tinkering is a part of any craft and it's how you reach a level of excellence. And some actors, you know, go into an audition or, or on set and they do these great choices and they get notes and then they're kind of bummed that they got a note. You wouldn't get a note if somebody didn't love you. Getting a note is an awesome thing. Um, you wanna get notes. People want to see what you're going to be like on set and how adaptable you are, or try it like this, try it like that. It's tinkering. And at an audition, notes are especially great to receive, but a lot of actors don't see it that way. So it's it's like, I think, I think a lot of folks see getting notes as, you know, a casting director, uh, director, producer, for some reason, didn't like what you did or, or something you know, your choice was off. And I say no to this, an emphatic no. It means getting a note, you guys, means that you have their attention. Something you did intrigued them and they wanna see more. So I think what I wanna say to you guys is don't let getting a note rattle you in any way. Use it as a springboard to solidify a spectacular audition. Here's a huge note. I've mentioned this before in articles and videos, a huge note from production and casting is this. Um, Joseph, we can always pull an actor back or give them a note, but we can never pull a brave choice out of them if we didn't see it to begin with. I'm gonna say that again, because it's important. 
Someone, a producer, a casting director, a director can always pull you back, okay, to an obvious choice or something more basic, but they're never going to pull that brave choice out of you if you didn't have the courage to lay it down uh, to begin with. And here's what the producers say when you guys book work. These are the notes from the producers. They'll say something to the effect, J.J. Abrams said this to uh, one of my friends, uh, Annie Chang, when she booked a series regular on his last show. And she made a very brave, dangerous choice to do what the other actors were too afraid to do. She outdangered the other actors with her choice. And, and he said, thank you for being the only one willing to take a risk. It was the one reason why we didn't need to see any other actors. And the other note from production, you guys, is this. It wasn't at all what we were looking for. It was better. Thank you. It wasn't at all what we were looking for. It was better. And I've mentioned this before, but Marlon Brando says this, find a way to do it that's never been done before. Get them to stop chewing. Literally stop the movement of the popcorn to the mouth with your choice. You got to hit them. Hit them. I call it a hook an opinion, an attitude, an emotional attitude. Stop the show. Stop the music. Have a choice that lifts people two inches off the ground and holds them there. So let's start with this. How to turn any note into a guaranteed win, whether it's an audition or on set. And I want to start with, this is the rule number one for the audition. And um, it's this. Don't guess, you guys, what you, don't guess what you think they are looking for. Okay, assume you are who they're looking for. Bring yourself to the piece with a really brave, fun choice. Anybody, why do we not want to guess what they're looking for? Why would we never want to ever try to please? Great casting directors never want you to please them. They want great work. Why do we not want to guess what people want? They don't know what they want. They're doing this process to discover something they hadn't, they hadn't imagined yet. And it's your job to show them. So the first rule, when you get a note, someone says, all right, I'm going to give you a note. Um, number one, these are three steps, okay? One, get clarification. Many people who work in the entertainment industry don't know how to give actors useful notes. Some of you are laughing right now because you know what I'm talking about. Like, there are a lot of people that don't know how to give actors useful notes, okay? And you know that. And that includes screenwriters, directors, producers, play playwrights, and casting directors. You know, the best note, you guys, I always say this, the best notes for actors are not giving an actor a note, is helping the actor find the way, find the best choice themselves. I'm always wary of people that give you, oh, try it like this or try it like that. When you do that to somebody, and you guys know this, it robs you of your best choices. Somebody is basically... Like, you know, telling what you telling you what they think you should do, but it's really great to see if you can get that great choice coming out of the actor. So some of the most insightful creators are shockingly some of the worst communicators. Many of these people view acting as this mysterious process, and they feel comfortable critiquing it and watching it on TV from their couch at home. But when it comes to shaping, they can't give you clarity. Um, sometimes they'll do things like not so big or or softer um, or more grounded, you know? Um, these aren't necessarily useful to you. Many directors with the actual producing teams behind them in the room um, will often feel compelled to give a note, even if your performance was flawless. You ever seen that before, you guys, where someone just gives a note uh, because they think they should give a note. This is a manifestation of their own anxieties. They want to show the producers that hired them that they know how to direct actors. So sometimes the notes have nothing to do with you. It's just someone's giving you a note to let somebody know that they can give a note, um, which is crazy. So it'll it'll often translate to like vague or tepid notes to actors, like just change it up or do something different this time. It's It's like, you know, these notes are not useful. So in this case, please don't be afraid 
to get further clarification of any notes that may be confusing. I am hearing what you're saying. I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Demand specificity. Ask a question like, okay, so do you want me to show more hesitation or do you want more conviction? So this is part of getting the specificity. Often providing the note taker with two choices in your question can force them to offer more specificity for you. And if they say something that doesn't make sense, which often happens, you must ask that follow-up question. I really want you guys to know, please do not go into these situations with your tail tucked between your legs. I, I've talked about this before. You want to go into, whether it's on set, in an audition, in a producer session, you want to come in as a colleague. You want to show someone that you're fun to play with. Uh, people are assessing what it's going to be like to hang out with you for many years. So um, please ask follow-up questions. For example, one of my clients got a note where the director told her at a second callback to be more rhythmic. Um, I'm smiling because um, it's not a very specific note. So my client wasn't sure what this meant. So she said more rhythmic when I raise my voice. And the director said, yeah, bones. Bones. So luckily the client asked for further clarification and he said, say the lines more rhythm rhythmically like bones snapping together, like clack, 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 like bones snapping together. Oh, okay. And like taking that five seconds to get more clarity meant that she could take an oddly worded note and directly apply it to her performance. Okay. So get the clarification. Don't be afraid. Don't feel rushed into taking a note. That's step number one. Step number two, you guys, take your space. You want to get distance from that note. You don't want to just quickly try to take somebody's note. Again, remember, don't guess what somebody's looking for at all. You want to try to make it your own. You're going to want to get some distance from the note taker and take a brief moment to process it. So don't succumb to the sense of urgency that sometimes exists in the room. On occasion, the people in the audition room are cranky and impatient. It's not your problem. That's their issue. It's not your problem. So take a minute to think about what the note means to you, how it impacts your perspective of the character or the script. You've done all your work on that character. So once you've done all the work, it's so hard before it's... I really want to tell you guys, taking a note is easy and fun as long as you do your version of the note, not what you think they want. This is really important. So take it, take a minute to think about what it means to you, how it impacts your perspective, your point of view, your attitude. Take a second to get a sense of what you're going to do. And never, you guys never feel like you have to hurry up and act, especially if that might cause you to do something that's motivated by a sense of panic. Never take a note that's motivated by a sense of panic. It's your audition. It's your on-set performance. Gather a few seconds to digest the note. And I'll tell you guys this, and I tell it to the actors I work with every week. Please do not be professional auditioners, okay? There are so many ways to get roles outside of traditional auditions before traditional auditions. So don't be obsessed with being professional auditions you guys ever heard of the concept of a mind virus? It's, it's nothing that's going to hurt you. It's it, their thoughts that are toxic. They're stories we tell ourselves about this industry, how things are supposed to work, and they're not true. It's fear-based. It's what every actor says you're supposed to do, like you're supposed to look for agents and managers, um, and all, all, all roles go through casting, and you can't book major roles if you don't have major credit. There's so much advice that's past actor to actor, um, that's toxic. And you get attached to these stories. I did a piece some weeks back, how to teleport to an A-list career, how you're, the next big thing in your acting career is this one step away. So sometimes with a note, it's your audition, gather some seconds, digest the note, and sometimes you need to gently remind the casting team of your rights as a professional in a nice way. So. When pushed to take a structurally significant note immediately, a phenomenally talented actor, friend, client I work with in my masterclass, Eric, the wonderful Eric Pasoja said, 
okay, you want me to do this right away. You want me to do well. I want to do well. I'm going to take this outside for a few minutes. Take the time you need. Gently remind someone what it means to be a professional. You guys, stand up for yourselves. Most reasonable casting or production professionals will never have a problem with such a request. And I want to tell you guys something that's crazy to me. Um, this brings us to cold reading, the concept of a cold read. I want to briefly break this down, and it may be worth doing a video on it at some point. What a cold read and what it isn't. Frozen cold reads are abusive. And I'll say it again. Frozen cold reads are abusive. Where you tell an actor, here's the piece, don't look at it, act. It is the equivalent of telling a writer, stick your pen on the page and go. It's abusive. It's a way to stall time in some acting classes. Here's what a professional cold read is. A professional cold read is, you came in, you read for the role of Jane. They loved you. They said, we'd like to see what you can do with Sarah. Please take her outside for 20, 30 minutes, whatever you need. Let us know and come back. A cold read is fully prepared, even though you're still on book and you're still, you know, you're still looking at that text. It's fully prepared. And here's the crazy thing about cold reading. Let's say you're an actor who competes for a hundred major roles a year because you know how to pitch yourself. Um, you're lucky if you see three cold reads in a year. It is a very easy skill to learn, but it should never be focused on obsessively. And you should never, ever be in a situation where someone says, here's a script and go. Now, when you're on set, you guys, and you get a note on a role you're working on, if it's a line change or a little tweak here, um, you should be able to take that note rather fast because it's not structural. Structural notes, like you're playing a new character or this world is not the Aaron Sorkin world. It's like multi-camera comedy or Disney Nickelodeon, two worlds that are far apart. You need to take that outside. So you need to stand up for your, please stand up for yourselves and gently or force, you know, forcefully or gently remind someone what it means to be a professional and don't accept frozen cold reads. Number three, the last sort of thing that you want to do to guarantee that win and make it your own and stand out is to make it your own. You guys, when your preparation is solid, often the note is only a minor tweak to freshen up your hook. What's the hook? Um, you guys can, you, some of you guys have watched uh, an audit in one of my classes. It's the product of 99 questions. The difference between good and great, you guys, are you starting every scene emotionally lit up and full instead of empty? Emotionally full, and then we let it go. We don't drag our preparation into the work. We don't want the acting to smell like the training. It has no place in the final acting. Meryl Streep talks about that. Javier Bardem, all the greats. You don't pollute the acting with the process. And the difference between good and great is this little bit extra. It's this ability um, in one second to ignite an emotional light up in you, an emotional preparation in one second, that is that hook. And I, again, invite you guys to come watch the work um, in a free audit uh, and see that process happening. But the hook is the thing that makes it so you don't have to act. As one of the great actors in Masterclass says, the hook is the thing that makes it so you don't have to do any acting. It's instant access to full emotional preparation on the tip of your finger and it lifts somebody off their seat, it pops a head up. So when your preparation is solid, often the only note is a minor tweak to freshen your hook. You it's a new, series jumping in again. She really likes when I you know, do these things. Mm. So a hook is an emotional opinion that cannot be ignored. It's very important to get a grasp on what this is. I wanna really point out that a lot of training asks you to make emotional choices based on what the writing and what the author is suggesting. Now, I'm gonna ask you something here. Martin Landau said that the 90% of the work for actors is what isn't in the text. That's what I do for a living. Why are we making emotional choices, intention, objective choices, based on what the writing suggests when in life, we don't say what we mean or what we feel? What we're trying to do in the acting is to put forward what we feel, our opinion, what we really mean, what's going on underneath the sheets of the text. The lines 
are coming out of the back like boat wake. Does that make sense? So why in life is there this sometimes disconnect, oftentimes disconnect between what we say and what we mean? Why are we making acting choices based on what the text is already doing? Our job is to figure out what do we really mean? What's going on underneath the sheets, under the surface of the text? And that's what the hook is. Um, so you want to adopt a new emotional attitude. And it helps you. It gives you a renewed perspective on the scene. So even so, you must make the note your own. A note from a casting team is like someone tossing you a hat and saying, here, put this on. So put it on. But just like in real life, you wouldn't just plunk a hat on your head and walk around in it willy-nilly without tweaking a little bit. You know, bend the rim, cock it upwards, turn it off center, slide it backwards, inside out. You know, like slice open the lining, change the color, um, add a pin or sticker you like to the outside. You, you would make it your own before parading all around town with it on, wouldn't you guys? So you have to let those same instincts rule in this case. You got to make it your own. You got to find your version of it. And whatever note you get, you have to let it jive with the character you've created and adjust the adjustment so that it meshes with the world that you've developed. You have the right to give yourself that freedom. There's a wonderful moment if you're ever able to watch, ever able to watch the incredible playing Shakespeare series. Um, it's incredible. It's some of the, the greats like Ben Kingsley, um, David Suchet, um, Judy Dench. They're breaking down Shakespeare scenes and they're breaking it down with the incredible RSC director, John Barton. And there's an amazing moment that describes everything we're trying to talk about here where Ben Kingsley performs a monologue and he had just won the Oscar for Gandhi and the director, John Barton said, um, Ben Kingsley performed the monologue, looked to John Barton for what did you think? And John Barton said, yeah, it's not connecting. Um, and Ben Kingsley said, okay, what should I do? And John Barton said, um, you know, um, take them along with you a little bit. Take them along. It's not connecting with them yet. Bring them in there with you. And Ben Kingsley sort of made a face like that was the most vague general note he had ever seen. So he, he kind of laughed a little bit and he said, uh, okay, um, that doesn't make too much sense. But so he got some clarification. He said, so do you mean sort of, um, you, you know, you know kind of uh, invite them in a little bit more? And John Barton said, yes. So Ben Kingsley says, okay, all right. Uh, took his space, and then what he did before he went into the Shakespeare, he started to improvise a little bit. He said to the audience, okay, you ready for it? You guys ready for it? Here it comes. Wait for it. Ready? Good. And then he went right into it. So he seamlessly transitioned improvisation right into the text and completely and totally made it his own. Yeah. Remember, you guys, the difference between good acting and great acting is the ability to start every scene emotionally full and lit up instead of empty. And what we're trying to do is to personalize it and to find that new light up based on that note, your version of the note. Getting a note for, from a director, it doesn't invalidate the choice you made. In many cases, it's actually the opposite. So if you went into the audition with an awesome choice, don't get rattled. Again, if you get a note, don't get rattled. Production and casting can always pull you back, and sometimes they will, but they're never going to pull that brave, um, fun choice if you don't have the courage to do it when you walk in. And while the note might be nonsensical, it's your job to build a bridge of communication between you and the, the director, between you and the director, helping this person engage in dialogue with actors. It's your responsibility to do that. Like I said, sometimes reminding somebody what it means to be a professional, but doing it gently uh, with kindness and with respect. And it's important because it gives everyone in the room a glimpse of what you're going to be like on set. What is it going to be like to work with you? What is the experience going to be like? And it shows them you can make adjustments. But ultimately, you guys, it shows that you can be a problem solver. So, so just in review here, what we're trying to do is take the note, get clarification, okay? Then take some distance from it. Take your time. It doesn't have to be a long time to make it your own. Personalize it, make it your own, and then do that. 
never just jump into what you think that note should be. And I would love to take some, a couple questions from you guys. I would love to see uh, what you may, questions you may have about this process. Again, you guys are all invited to come watch our incredible actors uh, via Zoom from Hollywood to anywhere in the world, get a workout every week. You can watch for free. You can jump into the work. They're working on currently casting major film and TV auditions, booked roles. We have incredible producer, writer, directors, casting directors coming to watch the work every week. And you can reach out through the website, josephperlman.com, P-E-A-R-L-M-A-N.com. Send us an email. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, we send out free acting and career tips all the time. And let's see. You guys have any questions? I'd love to kind of hang with you for a little bit and answer some of these questions. Love Ben Kingsley too. I think it's really cool how he bridged, he kind of took that bridge. He didn't just jump right in with the note. He thoroughly made it his own. Um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, in terms of brave choices, it's a good question, Dia. What do you suggest for the beginning of a self tape, the first seven to 10 seconds? Um, I did a video on how to put a winning self tape together. You can watch that, but what you wanna do is you want to, whatever work you're doing, and in the work that I do, we ask about 99 questions, but it doesn't feel like it, to find that light up. You wanna stand out in the first second of that piece, because if you don't stand out, it's really, really hard to warm into it. What you're trying to do in the first second, again, the difference between good and great is start emotionally full instead of empty. It's very easy, talking and listening, and going back to that is easy, but we're this is everyday life with all the boring parts cut out. I think Alfred Hitchcock said that. So same with a taped audition. You want to stand out in seconds. And also, you guys, remember, you want to stand out the moment you walk into a space. Now, rooms are virtual. Um, this isn't some new thing for COVID-19. It's like auditions and coaching has always happened via it you know, this, this way that we're doing via video and it always will. Uh, and you want to stand out in a virtual room. You want to stand out on a tape. It's also important to know you guys, there's 15 different ways of auditioning and it's important to clarify the context when you work. Don't just settle for one size fits all audition technique. Um, Pre-reads, your first read is different than a callback, is different than a producer session. Uh, an example of that is a lot of actors feel that in producer sessions or callbacks, they have to just do the thing that worked. You never want to do what once worked. You want to do something better. You want to try it different. Remember, nothing is ever the same. So it's important that you practice practice in the same context that you play in. Does that make sense? And I think one of the biggest mistakes that beginners make, Seth, thank you for that great question, and that leads to the next question that's asked, is thinking that they have to find an agent or a manager, that that will be the solution to all their problems when it's just the opposite. The, the, the biggest mistake a beginner can make is not realizing that it's your responsibility to get great. This is the Olympics. So it's important that you are great before you put yourself out there. It's easy to get opportunities. A lot of actors um, have these mind viruses about how the industry works. They think they're supposed to get an agent or manager and that someone else is going to magically do everything. At no point, whether you're a celebrity actor or not, at no point will somebody just do everything for you and you sit back. You always have to be doing 75, 80, 90 percent of the work. Always. We have an incredible guest coming up in two weeks. My friend Sarah Jackson, who is one of the probably the best manager in Hollywood. She has launched more A-list careers than anybody I know. And we are having an incredible uh, webinar discussion with Sarah with a QA and a uh, in two weeks. Uh, you guys are also welcome to be a part of it. Um, you just email us uh, on the website. But we're going to be talking about that. There are these sort of thoughts that are fear-based. And so get great and then be very clear about what you wanna do if you're a beginner. Like what's out there that I wanna be a part of? Not just I'll take anything I get because if you have the mindset, I'll just take what I get, you're gonna be eating other people's boat wake who know where they wanna go. Does that make sense? So be clear about what you want, get great. 
And also know who you are. Um, know who you are. As Simon Sinek says, and I've mentioned in other videos, people don't buy. They're not excited by what you do. They're excited and they buy why you do it. What is your why? And I, and I help actors to try to open that up. And yeah, and it's important in your training and it's important to me is to connect the career and the acting together to plug it in. Why wouldn't you? You know, what's the point of getting your acting on without figuring out what am I going to do with it? How am I going to how am I going to take action on some currently casting sides that are exciting to me? Um, good question here, Romero. How do I transition successfully from theater to television? Um, film, uh, I can't tell the, how do I successfully transfer? Okay. Your theater training is incredible. All the training you had. My background is in theater. It's one of the best trainings that you can have. Um, it's just being clear that your focus is now on film and TV. Theater is fantastic and you should still be able to do it. Sometimes people will give you these answers. Well, it's all about level, levels and it's bigger and smaller. No, the difference between film and television, you guys, is you're adjusting the structure. You get to go crazy inside. You're still going crazy. I think there's this big misconception with acting that you're supposed to be really small and shut down and you're not supposed to move. Well, maybe for a shot here and there, but you guys, film and television acting should be as physical as how we live. You should never be locked from the neck up. So the difference between the, the quick, sort of the quick and dirty version of um, theater versus film and TV is you're adjusting that structure that you get to go crazy inside. It's not as massive. You're not filling out a, a 500 person venue or a couple thousand person uh, Broadway venue, et cetera. Um, oh, what do you do when two people give you contradicting notes? Well, you need to figure out if they give you contradicting notes, um, it might not be a production or a situation that you want to be a part of. It is your responsibility also to say no to aggravation, okay? You shouldn't get contradicting notes, especially if it's on, if it's on set or in an audition. We need to figure out which note, who, who's, who's running the show here. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is really important to have a policy and I've adopted it years ago, you guys, of zero aggravation um, professionally. I know relationships, uh, some relationships, you know, there's a certain amount of aggravation, as we all know sometimes. But professionally, you do not want to tolerate aggravation because what happens is when something is aggravating you, after it's over, it takes up 80% of your headspace and it still screws with you. So it's really better to not just feel like you have to accept anything you get. Sometimes you'll get notes from people saying like, um, just take anything you get, just, just get everything. Why would you do that? Why would you subject yourself to doing something that isn't fun? Remember, you guys, it's possible to launch your careers faster and with less effort when you are lit up with fun. And you can't be lit up with fun when you're in a situation, um, when you're in a situation where something is aggravating to you. And yeah, and the other thing I'll, I'll, I'll sort of leave you with, and it's a, it's one of the last questions that I'll, um, and you do not need a degree or attend film schools to make it in the industry. And some of the, um, it's great. The degree itself is not going to help you. The training will, I'll tell you that the degree won't, the training will. So the training is important, but you can get that training piecemeal outside of those types of places with great vocal coaching, uh, great accent and dialect coaching, great acting coaching, et cetera. I'm so having so much fun connecting with you guys. Um, again, I hope you're taking great care of yourselves. Um, don't feel like a waste receptacle for, there's a lot of information coming at us sometimes. Sometimes it's important to question, are the people that are giving that information, do they have something to sell you? Or is it legitimately information that is for you, okay? I, I'm a big believer in let's clear the desk of all this clutter. The way you are going to approach a career is different than anybody else. And it's never gonna look, there's never a one size fits all type of approach. So you have to trust yourselves. I've said it before, 90% of your success potential is your personality. It's like the, the Ruby slipper phenomenon. You've always had the power to do everything on your own. Don't let somebody steal your watch and sell it back to you. It's one of my favorite Alan Watts quotes. Trust yourselves. And I really feel like the best barometer for this, you guys, and I'll leave you with this, is 
If it isn't fun, it's not working. It's a very binary question. Is it fun? Am I having fun or do I not enjoy this? And if you're having lots of fun, then it feels great in your body, then trust that. That is your best barometer. Um, I love you guys. I wish you nothing but the best. Come and come and join us for a free audit if you haven't already. Uh, be a part of all the fun industry events we have coming up. And you can reach out on the website. And I cannot wait to jump in uh, to another video with you guys next week. Uh, take care. And until next time, bye, you guys. <clears throat>